sagacious, intelligent house pet and companion. No breed is superior to a well-bred Manchester Terrier. There is a sleek, hardy look to the Manchester that few other dogs present. His long, clean head, keen expression, glossy ebony coat, tapered tail, and smart, wide-awake appearance always command attention. Generations ago, there was in England a black and tan terrier, less graceful in outline, rougher in coat, and shorter on the leg than those of today. These terriers were not developed as pack dogs, but rather as workers and family companions. They were accomplished rat killers, whether in the pits or along the water courses. They were also used to course game for the family stew pot. A fancier by the name of John Mule, with the idea of producing a dog that could be used for both ratting and coursing, mated a whippet bitch with a celebrated rat-killing dog. A crossbred terrier, dark brown in color, was the result and the Manchester School of Terriers was launched. Whippet, Greyhound, Italian Greyhound, and Dachshund have all been mentioned as partners of more or less importance in the background and creation of the Manchester. Designation of the new breed did not take place until about 1860. The Manchester soon spread over the British Isles and eventually came to this country in considerable numbers. Development of the toy from the larger dog was first a matter of chance and later a matter of selective breeding. During Victorian times, inbreeding became the order of the day and size diminished alarmingly, thus sacrificing vitality for the sake of diminutiveness. Realizing their mistake, breeders endeavored to correct their technique. They aimed for and got toy weights with renewed vigor. No longer are extremes of size favored or fostered within the breed. The first black and tan terrier, or gentleman's terrier, as he is traditionally called, to be registered in the American Kennel Club stud book was a dog named Lever in 1887. It became known as the Manchester Terrier in the late 1930s. Up until 1959, the Manchester Terrier was registered as two different breeds. Interbreeding between the two breeds was not permitted. Since then, they have been registered as a single breed, the Manchester Terrier, with two varieties, the toy and the standard. You'll be seeing many toy and standard Manchester Terriers during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so but all will help your understanding of the breed. In general appearance, the Manchester Terrier has a sleek, sturdy look. He is a nearly square, compact dog, muscular, and capable of great agility, enabling him to hunt, a purpose for which he was bred. His long, clean head is set on a well-proportioned body. The outline of the dog is graceful and elegant. The coat is short, jet black and rich mahogany in color, with clearly delineated markings. The tail is a tapered tail, necessary for balance. His keen expression and smart, wide-awake appearance command attention. For the toy variety of the Manchester Terrier, weight should not exceed 12 pounds for both dogs and bitches. Males should be decidedly masculine without coarseness, and females should be decidedly feminine without over-refinement. As for the standard variety, weight for dogs and bitches should be greater than 12 pounds and not exceed 22 pounds. Standards weighing over 22 pounds are to be disqualified. Judges must always remember that to determine true lines of the Manchester, Emphasis should be placed on judging them on the ground and in motion, rather than on the table. Let's begin our detailed examination of the Manchester Terrier with the head. The size and proportion of the head must be in balance with the body. 
this is a standard Manchester Terrier head. This is a toy Manchester Terrier head. The head is long, narrow, tight-skinned, almost flat in outline, with a slight indentation up the forehead. There is no perceptible stop. Here, you can see that the planes of the skull and the muzzle are as close as possible to a straight line. The muzzle and the skull are equal in length. From the front, or the side, you can see that the head is slightly wedge-shaped, tapering to the nose. There are no visible cheek muscles. The muzzle is well filled up under the eyes. The Manchester Terrier's nose must be black. This dog's muzzle appears snipey, which is not desirable. This dog lacks underjaw. And the muzzle on this otherwise nice head is not straight. It is Roman-nosed, which is undesirable. This head is correct. It is long, narrow, tight-skinned, almost flat in outline, with a slight indentation up the forehead. This is a correct standard head. This is a correct toy head. And from the front, this correct standard head is slightly wedge-shaped, tapering to the nose. The sides of the face are well filled up under the eyes. The nose is black. In fact, this is a lovely head study overall. The tight lip jaws are level in opposition. Teeth are functionally level. Incisors of the upper jaw may make a close, slightly overlapping contact with the incisors of the lower jaw, like this, a scissors bite. This is correct. The jaws even on a toy Manchester Terrier are strong and tight, with a scissors bite preferred. A level bite, where the teeth meet edge to edge, is also acceptable. Complete dentition should be present in both level and scissors bites. The Manchester Terrier's eyes are small, bright, sparkling, and as nearly black as possible. They are set moderately close together. They should be almond-shaped, slanting upwards on the outside. The eyes should neither protrude from nor sink in the skull. A distinction between the larger standard variety and the toy variety of the Manchester Terrier is the ears. Both varieties have moderately small ears that are narrow at the base and pointed at the tip, like this. They are set high on the skull and are as close together as possible without touching. In the toy variety, ears are moderately small. They are set well up on the skull and close together. They are moderately narrow at the base with pointed tips like this. The toy's ears are naturally carried erect. Wide, flaring, blunt-tipped or bell ears are a serious fault. Ears that have been cropped or cut are a disqualification in the toy variety. What about these ears? On the toy Manchester seen here, the ears are wide and flaring, which is a fault. Correct toy ears are narrow, and they should stand erect naturally. These ears are set too low. Remember, Toy and standard ears are set up on the skull. In the standard variety, ears are erect or button. They are small and narrow. They are smaller at the base and set as close together as possible. Ear cropping is allowed in the standard variety of Manchester Terrier. But if the ears are cropped, they should be done to a point like this. They are long in appearance and are carried erect. 
Now let's discuss the Manchester Terrier's neck and body. The neck should be of moderate length, slim and graceful. It gradually widens as it blends into the shoulders. The neck is slightly arched and should be free from throatiness. The throatiness seen here is not desirable. The Manchester shoulders are well laid back to ensure good forward reach and motion. The shoulder blades and upper arms are relatively the same length. The chest should be deep in brisket, reaching a line level with the elbows. The forechest is moderately defined. The forelegs are straight, strong, and are placed well under the body. The distance from withers to elbow is equal to the distance from elbow to ground. From the front, you can see that the chest is narrow between the legs, which is desirable. This chest is too wide in front. Here, the elbows are out and the legs are bowed. This dog should have more brisket and chest. This correct front is narrow as desired, and the chest is deep. This dog is straight in shoulder, which is not desirable. The Manchester Terrier is to be well angulated in front. This correct front assembly is in balance with the rest of the body. The chest is deep. Four legs are strong and straight. They are set well under the body. The front feet are compact, well arched, with jet black nails like these. Pasterns are strong and almost perpendicular. The feet are straight turning neither in nor out. These feet are flat, which is not correct. These pasterns show too much slope. These correct feet are compact, well arched, and have the desirable black nails. The Manchester Terrier's body is moderately short with robust loins. The ribs are well sprung from the spine behind the shoulders, but flattened toward the lower end to permit clearance of the elbow in motion. The top line shows a straight arch over the loins and falls swiftly to the tail set. The Manchester Terrier is a little longer than he is tall. This dog is too flat in top line and also lacks tuck up. Both are incorrect. And this roach back is also incorrect. Here again is a Manchester with correct proportions. The tail is moderately short. It is set on a little lower than the hip bones. Thick where it joins the body, the tail tapers to a point. When standing, the tail is carried low or out. When moving, the tail may be carried with a slight upward curve, but never carried over the back. And this tail is carried too high, which is incorrect. The hind quarters should give an impression of power with good bone and muscle. There should be a slight slope of the pelvis from the spinal column. There should be sufficient angulation to balance with the front, which will allow the dog to move with good drive from the rear legs. Stifles should be well angulated. Upper and lower thighs are well muscled and of approximately equal length. Hocks are well let down, perpendicular to the ground. From the rear, the legs should be straight and well muscled. Hocks are well let down and parallel to each other, like this. 
This bitch is too straight and stifle, which is not correct. And this bitch is too narrow behind and lacks musculature. This bitch's hindquarters are correctly angulated with good muscling. See how the rear assembly here is in good balance with the rest of the body. Rear feet are compact, well arched, with jet black nails. They are cat-like in shape. Now let's discuss the Manchester Terrier's coat. The coat is smooth, short, thick, dense, close and glossy, not soft. As for color, the standard requires there be only one combination. Jet black with a rich mahogany tan, like this. The colors do not run or blend into each other, but instead abruptly form clear, well-defined lines of color division. There is a small tan spot over each eye and a very small tan spot on each cheek. These are typical accented kiss marks of the Manchester Terrier. The lips of the upper and lower jaws should be tanned, extending under the throat and ending in the shape of the letter V. The inside of the ears are partly tanned. There are tan spots called rosettes on each side of the chest above the front legs. They are more pronounced in puppies than adults. There should be a black thumbprint patch on the front of each foreleg at the pastern. The remainder of the forelegs is tanned to the carpal joint. There should be a distinct black pencil mark line running lengthwise on the top of each toe on all four feet. Tan on the hind legs should continue from the penciling on the feet up the inside of the legs to a little below the stifle joint. The outside of the hind legs are black. There should be tan under the tail and on the vent, but only of such size as can be covered by the tail. Any color other than black and tan shall be disqualified. White on any part of the coat is a serious fault, and it disqualifies whenever the white shall form a patch or a stripe measuring as much as one half inch in its longest dimension. In keeping with the Manchester Terrier's sleek, sturdy look, its movement is free, effortless, and agile, with no wasted motion. There should be good reach in front with no indication of hackney gait and good drive from the rear, like this. He covers the ground efficiently. Coming toward you, the leg should move straight ahead, never being thrown out to the side. See how the legs move in a straight line from shoulders to pad. There should be a slight convergence toward a center line of gravity as speed increases. And going away, the rear legs should follow in a straight line behind the forelegs. See how the hocks extend fully. Rear drive should be readily discernible. There is also corresponding convergence at faster speeds. This dog moves too wide in front. And this rear is underdeveloped, showing weak movement. This dog is high in the rear and has a poor top line. Here again is proper movement, free, agile, unrestricted, with good reach in front and drive from behind. See how the gait is free and forceful with no wasted motion. From rude beginnings as a cottage ratter, the Manchester Terrier has become the gentleman's terrier. Today's Manchester Terrier is sleek and sturdy, yet elegant and agile. A sagacious, intelligent house pet and companion, 
with a friendly and outgoing disposition. The Manchester Terrier combines the best of both worlds.